Hi friends, my name is Zaki Ahmed. Welcome to my channel, Zach's Curiosity. I am an embedded software engineer working in an automotive company. In this channel, you will quench your curiosity thirst. If you have ever wondered how the gadgets around you work, from your washing machine to Boeing 787, from your smartphone all the way up to a space shuttle, there is a secret. Every smart gadget has one or more hidden computers, which is responsible for all the magic. These hidden computers are called embedded systems. Embedded systems control many devices in use today, ranging from portable devices such as smartphone and smartwatches to stationary units like traffic light controllers. To know more, fasten your seat belt and let's travel into the world of Zach's curiosity. You might have wondered, how does a fridge know that door is open and hence turn on the light? Or how does your car know that your belt is intact and it's safe to move? How does your washing machine know that it's time to drain out the water and start spinning? Before we answer these questions, let's go back to school and understand first what is a computer. In simple terms, a computer is a machine made up of components such as a microprocessor where all the magic happens a primary memory, RAM, ROM and fast accessible caches to retain information for a short period and a permanent memory such as hard disks or SDD storage, input devices such as keyboard and a mouse, output devices like a monitor with built-in speaker, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and Ethernet cards for networking, the operating system, graphical user interface and the application softwares. So, a computer is a machine designed to achieve a variety of tasks at hand. It's a general purpose device. It's bulky and it's power hungry and not to mention super expensive. Just for a moment, imagine fitting your brand new MacBook Pro into an old dumb washing machine just to control the sequence of actions like estimation of water required, taking the water in, washing the clothes, rinsing and then spinning fast enough to drain out the water. If you have observed here, you are wasting all the other functions in this super capable computer which otherwise could have served you well. Here is where embedded systems pitch in. Embedded systems are made up of what is known as a microcontroller. A microcontroller is a microprocessor clubbed with internal memory and interfaces to communicate to the outside world all in a single package. This microcontroller is then brought to life with application software to carry out specific tasks and real-time operating system also called as ATOS which is a very efficient boss which enables the execution of these tasks all this put together in a single package is what makes an embedded system. This subsystem is then embedded in a large system like a mechanical or an electrical device giving it computer-like functionality to sense its surrounding using its sensors, processing this acquired data in its microcontroller and performing predefined actions through its actuators. So when you open your fridge, microcontroller inside sensors the door open through a switch, software logic responsible here is invoked which then turns the light on through a switch. Similarly, advanced traffic light controllers uses communication and sensors networks to collect real-time vehicle data. This data is then fed to a microcontroller which then decides to turn the traffic light on or off. Before we plunge into more details, let's go back in time to glance at the history of embedded systems. In 1961, the very first embedded system was used in an intercontinental ballistic missile called Minuteman. This embedded system was the Autonetics D17 guidance computer and it was used for guidance and control of the Minuteman ICBM which had a range of 5500 nautical miles. The integration of this embedded system along with the first solid fuel enabled mass production of these missiles. And moving forward, in 1966, the Apollo guidance computer was used in the Apollo program which installed in its Apollo lunar module and Apollo command module. These modules used in Apollo 11 mission landed astronauts Neil Armstrong 
and Buzz Aldrin on Moon on July the 20th, 1969. Now let's discuss some of the modern usages of embedded system. These tiny computers finds the replication in almost all modern day applications you can think of. For example, modern day cars are not just mechanical dumb machines anymore. They are getting intelligent day by day. Cars are made up of embedded systems known as electronic control units ECUs, which are designed to handle specific tasks in a car. For example, anti-lock braking system ABS unit that helps in effective braking and avoids skidding. Another example is an airbag module that deploys the airbag in the event of a crash. If you are curious enough, the next time you take your car to a service station, do check out the issues that your car is equipped with. You will be amazed. Not only in transportation, but embedded systems are also saving millions of lives every year. They are an integral part of every medical equipment in use today. Ever heard of a pacemaker? No? Let me explain. Normal human heart has a pacemaker that is responsible for keeping its pumping action in sync. It creates electrical impulses that reach atria which is a chamber into which blood enters the heart. This impulse makes the atria contract and pumps the blood into the ventricles. After a few milliseconds, this pulse reaches ventricles which contracts thus pushing the blood out of the heart. If this natural pacemaker is malfunctioning, then it leads to abnormal heart beats resulting cardiac arrest and even death. To fix this problem, an artificial pacemaker is implanted which has a computer and electrodes to carry out the functions of a natural pacemaker. Having said all that, as a fun fact, the smartphone in which you are watching this video right now is more powerful than the Apollo guidance system used for landing the man on the moon. And now, if you are planning to visit Mars using your homemade rocket controlled by your smartphone, mm, I would suggest you hold your horses. We have not discussed the failures involving embedded systems yet. Way back in 1996, NASA launched Mars exploration robot Pathfinder. It was assigned to collect soil samples, take photographs and do chemical analysis on the samples collected. After a few days of normal operation, the mission was jeopardized by software resets, interrupting its normal operations and risk of data loss. After a thorough analysis, it was found that these computer resets was caused by a software bug popularly known as Priority Inversion. In simple terms, Priority Inversion is a scenario where a higher priority task is made to wait too long for its turn because another low priority task is being executed. This is due to bad resource management and task scheduling. Another famous failure involving embedded systems was on June 4, 1996. Ariane 5 rocket was launched from the coast of French Guiana. 37 seconds later, the rocket flipped 90 degrees in the wrong direction that ripped the boosters apart from the main stage, which caused the self-destruction of a $370 million investment. What went wrong? Problem was a software bug in the rocket's inertial reference system. The rocket used this system to determine whether it was pointing up or down, which is known as the horizontal bias also known as BH value. This value was represented by a 64-bit floating variable, which was perfectly adequate. However, the processor encountered an operand error and the software tried to stuff this 64-bit value into a 16-bit integer, resulting in the engine being fed with junk data instead of actual flight data. This caused the engines immediately to overcorrect by thrusting in the wrong direction destroying the rocket seconds later. So there are a considerable amount of challenges both in hardware and software when an embedded system is designed. Hardware design challenges starts with choosing the right processor first. One should decide on an adequate amount of ingredients like power consumption, processor type, risk versus CISC, which is nothing but how many complex instructions a processor can understand 
word length which is the number of bits a processor can handle in one clock cycle for example a 8 bit processor can process 8 bits in one clock cycle memory addressability which is the number of memory locations a processor can point to and number of registers registers are very small and extremely fast memories that processor can directly access more number of registers means more speed all this is just for the microprocessor there are similar challenges when choosing RAM, ROM, input-output interfaces, human-machine interface, etc. and also the overall cost involved. Software design challenges starts from auto selection and ends with memory testing and validation. Code optimization is also incorporated to increase the code efficiency, to decrease code size and to reduce memory usage. Having understood embedded systems, let us now discuss how the future of embedded systems will be. There is no doubt that embedded systems will play a vital role in emerging technologies like Internet of Things, self-driving cars, smart agriculture, advanced healthcare devices, robotics, artificial intelligence and even Elon Musk's dream of putting a man on Mars. I hope this video has brought in some level of understanding of the topic. To watch more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and also don't forget to like, comment and share. See you in the next video.